So there's a lot to show today. And I, you know, I try to keep it simple, but I'm sorry, I just don't know how <laughs> to keep things simple. I'm just so excited about all the goodies that we have. Um, really, basically, all the things you can do with one kind of paper. And I want to talk about this paper because we've had this for a long time. Yes, Tomo has a traditional use-in paper. It is a beautiful paper. It is on the pricey side, but you get what you pay for. It's really good stuff. And um, it's got, it's printed with uh, beautiful gold overlay. It's very saturated. It is uh, fibrous. It's like a washi, you know, it's that washi gray paper. There are some fibers inside. And this one happens to be the colorful one. I'm going to be showing a lot of this uh, package here, uh, which is all blues, which are just incredible. And you know what else is cool about it? When you get the paper, you're not only getting paper, but you're getting these amazing gold paper clips, which I love. These are beautiful, fantastic little paper clips you can't find in the uh, Office Max, that's for sure. Hi, Leslie. From Indiana, all right. I'm just saying hi to everybody if I can see. I try to get a glance over on my iPad and see who's here today. But so glad everybody's here. Um, so this one, the selection of blue is so gorgeous. The item number, just so you know, is 4336. Uh, there's also 4312. There's a lot of these. They're just, a, it's a using. You see the word using in front of the package. You know that is going to be that high quality paper that is not only used for origami, but also collage, uh, all kinds of, of, of different paper crafting. And I'm gonna try to cover as much as I can today. Just, I wanna give this the attention it deserves. It's such a beautiful paper. So, and it, you know, it's like precious, but you can find so many things to, to do with it. So I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna put these little bits away here and I'm gonna get started on my first project. I'm gonna talk about uh, my friend Michael Strong, he's a paper crafter, and he's a really great card maker, paper crafter. And he showed me how to do these really cool three-dimensional pillow-like uh, little pillows, basically, using the using paper and some simple materials you might have around your house. So I'm going to show you how uh, I do that and how Michael showed me so easy and really if you don't like glue on your hands this is the best thing best project so i'm going to set all my stuff aside for a little bit and then of course i want to make sure you all see all the little goodies i want to have i'm basically going to do a demo of all the little goodies that you're seeing on the table but the first one i want to do is this because it is uh really easy so i'm going to use a little something to keep my from putting a hole in my um table <laughs> Hi, Randall's here. We've got lots of regulars here. So welcome. So glad you're here. Um, one thing that you get in your package, and I didn't mention also, I was so excited, is in the use-in paper, you get some cardstock on the back of the paper. And I'm going to use this. It's a, it's nice and thick and it's nice. And it's just a nice weight. It's almost like a cereal box weight. And I cut this down ahead of time, but um, you can get several squares if you want to do this technique. You can get several squares out of this backing. But I'm going to just show you how I did it. It's so much fun. It's too easy. So you're going to also need some double-sided tape. And I just used some Scott, Scotch tape. Susan, hi, from Vermont. Nice to see you. Double-sided permanent 3M tape. Buy it anywhere. Easy peasy. Um, you can use red line tape, but that may be just be a little overkill. But it's really fun. Um, you can take some... What are these little things called? These little cotton wedges or not wedges, cotton pads that you might have. It's, you know, a cosmetic thing, or you can use foam. Mike used a foam sheet that you can buy at Office Max, but I was like, I didn't want to buy a whole box of it because it's very expensive. So whatever you have around the house that you could pad your, um, you know, make a padding out of. I think these little cotton ones might be fun. I'm going to try that. But what I've done is I'm cutting, I'm going to take, let's see, I want to make a different color this time. I'm going to grab this piece of paper because I think it's so gorgeous, these little fans. And I'm going to cut my paper and I'm going to tell you the size so you know. If you want to make one like this, this is one and, uh, no, it's two and a quarter square. So basically any square will work. And you'll need your, so that's your base. 
and you're going to need your little pads. Like I'm just going to make it kind of a you want to fit this in a square, and I really don't care if it's perfect. I just want it to be padded. So first thing I'm going to do is what Mike did, and he showed me, and I love this. Is I took he took a little tape. It was too easy. I'm going to leave the some of the the center alone. I'm not putting tape on the center because that's where I'm going to put my little brad. And if you have little brads like these little things from the you know office, little small tiny brads or regular brads, you can use that. Um, yes, we do record these. It's being recorded now, so yes, these will come up. If you can craft along with me, and if you can't craft along, you can certainly watch it at another time. So I've got four pieces of double stick tape right now in my little. Um, whoops thing's going to get away from me. Now I'm going to put some of these layers of um, padding down. Whatever you've got, you don't have to have exactly what I've got, but I'm just going to put it down and I don't want it to go outside of my uh, of my piece of uh, cardboard, but if it does, I can always trim it. So whatever you've got, I'm just going to stick it in there. <laughs> I should be using double thick tape to stick it on, but I'm not. I'm just going to kind of layer it on. But Mike showed me how you just put double stick tape down in between the layers and that should hold it. But I'm just going to be a little crazy here and I'm going to try it without. <laughs> of course, everything's going everywhere. So, but I'm going to still make this work. I'm going to put a couple of pieces of tape on the last layer that I have right here. And I do think I need to put layer. Well, I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. But he actually put layers. I mean, yeah, each between each layer. Now to make the uh, hello, I'm going to cut my paper just a little bit well, good enough, bigger than the, the uh, card, this thing right there. It's gonna be like that, a little bit bigger than my original piece. And I'm gonna lay it right on top of my card right here. Just gonna lay it right on top, center it as much as I can. This can be really padded. I hope it works. <laughs> Never done it this way. Um, so I've got it nice and padded. There it is, it's sitting there and <clears throat> Now I'm just gonna put some tape on the outside edge of each side of my uh, cardboard, just a little bit. And this is just a simple way. You don't have to make this fat padding. I'm just gonna maybe over stacking the layers. You could make a thin pad, thin pillow or a fat pillow. This is, I think I'm just stretching it a little to see how far I can go, but really only two layers is probably all you need. But what I'm going to do now is I've got all four sides taped and I'm just going to take it like a, I'm stretching a canvas and I'm going to press this down in the center and I'm going to just bring it over and pull it as tight as I can um, over the uh, side of the padding and everything. Same thing, I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to do the same. I may have cut this too small <laughs> because I went a little thick, but I'm going to still try. It might be too small, but I'm going to still do it. Pulling it as far as I can until... There we go, like that until it holds. Now I've, I've got it on there, yay. Now I'm gonna take the little uh, sides. Now you can take the sides and you can narrow them a little bit by just, let's see, I'm just gonna, not touching this side, I'm just gonna kinda do like a little book minding thing here. And I'm gonna take this little piece, I'm gonna grab a smaller pair of scissors. Just gonna move this out of the way. This is in the way right here. I'm just gonna move that out of the way kind of doing like a book binding thing. See, I've got that, those little corners mitered and I'm gonna push these in just a little bit, push this in and I'm gonna do the same thing. Take my fingers and I'm rolling and stretching it over and I'm just kind of making that stick. And you can see how that nice padding is there. I'm gonna do the same with this. I'm gonna just do this little corner here, right on this side and one on this side and then I'm going to just push this in on the kind of angle it in. And I'm going to angle this in. Now I could put a little more tape on that, but I don't think I'm, I, it matters right now. Uh, most important thing is for me to get these little angles in. So I'm just going to go take that and kind of pinch them in a little bit. And then I'm just going to take that whole thing and roll it over like that. Now this is kind of a cheater's way. This is the way you would do a you know book cover, but it's using only tape and I'm kind of cheating. So I've got this gorgeous padded thing happening here. Now I'm gonna leave this alone. I do have some, I could put tape 
for a, this is actually enough tape to stick to whatever I'm working on. So let's, let's say I'm going to have a greeting card or I'm putting it on the top of a box. You have the sticky here, but um, I'm going to take the next step is to make the little uh, pad or the little hole in the center to give it that sort of tuckered, what do you call it? A tuck and roll upholstery thing. I'm going to take my little uh, this is a screw punch, but if you don't have a screw punch, you can just use an awl that works also or anything like that. You can just find the center if you don't feel comfortable in just eyeballing it. I'm just going to eyeball and I'm going to push that this thing down a few times until it goes all the way through. And it did. Now, you you could use a long reach uh, hole punch if you want an awl, like I mentioned, just a ice pick type thing works just fine. And I'm going to grab my... Uh, little brads, and I have to decide which of these do I want. Do I want a gold one? Yes, I want a gold one. Um, just a regular size would look really nice too. This is, uh, I think it's really pretty. You just push it in as far as you can until it just gets as flat as you can, and then take your fingers and flatten that little brad backwards. And I, look at that adorable pillow. I just think that's so cool. And I could put this, if I cut down a piece of um, black paper that's already, that you get with the uh, pack. You could make a nice little black border, just cut it around and then mount it on something. You could, like I mentioned, I mount, mounted it on this box, one of those. I made the card using, I just did three of them in three different uh, colors. And I mounted, the, you know, just glued them on the black piece of card and then glued it onto the watercolor card. And I think that the, oh, Cindy, that's a great idea, using embossing powders and making the brads any color. That is a great idea. So when Cindy mentions that, uh, if you want, if you have, if you're a stamper and you wanted to do, to color your brads, if you only had just brass ones, you can color them either with, like she said, a, a embossing powder or even a, a acrylic paint pen or a paint pen, like a Sharpie a oil-based paint pen, that'd probably work. But so there you, I wanted to show you this because I think that is so cool. You could put it on just a card, like if there was, I don't have a piece of blank card right now, but just this alone on a center of a card with a little greeting would look so pretty. So just wanted to give you that little fun thing with uh, with this paper. And, and if you tried this, I'll just mention, if you just tried this with regular paper, like regular copy paper or... Um, just regular origami paper, you're not going to get this fabric feel because there, this paper actually feels almost like fabric. There's another thing I like to do with this paper, and I didn't plan this, but I'm going to tell you this is uh, because this paper is so durable. Um, there's something called a momigami technique where you can wrinkle, you put a little uh, some starch, you can put nori paste, a little bit of starch, you can put methyl cellulose on it, um, but once you've treated it, you just take it and you can wrinkle, you wrinkle it the heck out of it like this. Now, I would have treated it ahead of time. But if, if you keep wrinkling it and opening and wrinkling it, I'm just going to show you. This is just a quick technique um, that you would just keep. This is you just kind of scrunch it together like this, like I'm showing you. And you do it in different directions many, many times over, especially if it's been treated. This paper is going to feel like fabric eventually. It'll give that really soft, malleable feel. You can stitch it. In fact, you can stitch this paper anyway because it's just so strong. And it's got lots of fibers, and it is fantastic. And I wish I had some, uh, some examples of this paper when it's been treated. But you can see the wrinkly thing happening and how gorgeous that would look, let's say, in a little collage. Um, that texture and the wrinkly stuff. So this is called momigami. That's the the technique. So if you look it up, you'll see, kind of get some ideas about that. But this paper is fantastic for that. So I wanted to, I'm not throwing that away. <laughs> I'm just going to wrinkle it and I'll keep working, wrinkling it later. This is a great activity. Let's say you're in front of a TV or, you know, you're nervous, you're bored or whatever. You could do this and it takes a little patience to get it done, but wow, you know, the eventually you'll feel this fabric feel, it'll feel great. So just wanted to set that aside and tell you about that. Now, let's talk about these kinds of things. So I have had so much fun covering this box and I love to cover boxes in general. Um, 
because, you know, repurposing a box that I get in the mail. Yes, momigami is so much fun, isn't it? Um, so this is a box that was some jewelry, was some jewelry that I got as a gift. And actually I found that this box, to my surprise, fits pretty, fits my ATC cards that are in progress. They're not finished, but I have, um, oh, someone just mentioned, oh, do you, could you decoupage that into a journal once it has paste on it? Um, you mean the momigami or that's a question I need to, I would love to answer, but I don't know. I'm happy to answer that. I just probably would need to know, is it the momigami or which project <laughs> were we talking about? So um, this, so basically repurposing boxes. I'll go from there. And then of course, if we get, if I read, oh, you want to cover a cigar box? Yeah, this would be so cool. So if you're going to cover a cigar box and it has paint or something on it, maybe I would suggest gessoing it first or priming it because I didn't prime this box. It was very uh, paint resistant. It did not like it had a plastic coating. So it was a real bear to get that covered. But just so you, you know, if you have something plain that is either non-treated or non-plastic, you can just paint right over it. But um, you could gesso it. Then paint your base color, whatever you want your base color to be. Now I painted, you can see, this is what, this is the original box. You can see it's kind of a shiny plastic coating. And I used a matte acrylic. It stuck pretty good once it cured. And the thing about matte acrylics or any acrylic, it takes time for that to cure. Because the first time, the first hour after I painted it, I could have easily lifted that paint off just by touching it like this. And now it's been here for uh, quite a few days and it's sticking. So that's a good thing. But I wanted to show you about what, how fun this uh, nori paste oh, by is. By the way, Karen, there yeah. was a, a question about the momigami. Yeah, that was. Okay. So if you um, are using, if you're doing your momigami with a starch, like the nori paste or methyl cellulose, not an oil, or like some people do momigami with oil, like coconut oil. I think I even have something on my YouTube that talks about the oil. So that is probably not a good um, thing to, to be layering into your journals or your collages. But if you use a starch base like this nori, or like I mentioned, methyl cellulose or potato starch paste, any of those, you can make your uh, momigami and when it dries and it's all ready to go, yes, you can layer and you can do things over it. So yes, it's, it's perfect. This is water soluble and it won't, it won't resist your layering or any glues that you put over it. So I'm gonna just talk about this now, the nori just on its own by its, just being just being nori that it is. It's such a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful product. And now I'm gonna use a piece of paper underneath because I don't like to mess up my table. <laughs> there it is. But I'm gonna take my nori paste straight out of the jar. Now, you notice this is our 20 ounce studio jar. I love it. I mean, the only time, you know, like it dry a little bit here and there, but it lets me keep the jar, the jar open. I can get my hands in there if I feel like it. It's a nice big uh, container that I can do a lot of pasting. But also we have this little adorable travel one or just one to try out. If you like to, to see what Nori Paste is about, you, we've got this really cute little, cute little guy. But this one's for serious pasters like me or anyone who likes to do mixed media. Now I'm going to grab a piece well, I'm just going to use a, um, a brush that's not really soft. This is a, it's a nylon brush and it's a little stiffer than a watercolor brush. And I usually like to wet it ahead of time, just slightly dampen it, but not, you know, not to where it's dripping. So I've got a little water on it and I'm going to just take some nori paste and I'm going to put it onto the back of my paper. And nori paste is lovely because it won't, um, it, it doesn't alter the, the, the paper's shine or color. It doesn't go like make it see-through like some of it, some uh, glues do. You could By do the this way, Karen, no could yeah. you also answer, or um, someone was asking if Nori paste is similar to Yes Paste. Talk about how those two Oh, compare. it's so different from Yes Paste. I, I, I have Yes Paste, which I rarely bring out of my stash. Hi, Wanda. Just want to say hi. I miss you guys. I miss all my elementary ladies already. I miss you ter terribly. Um, I'm so glad you're here. Um, yes Paste is a beautiful product that it sticks flat and it's very sticky. 
um, it's, stay, it's sticky from the get-go. Now, nori paste is not sticky from the get-go. It is totally repositionable. It is, uh, you know, doing this with the yes paste, if I were to just take that paper and do just what I did, it would stick and I'd have a heck of a time opening it up. This nori paste is repositionable, repositionable for a good amount of time. It has a lot of open time, way more than yes paste. And it doesn't attract moisture when it dries like Yes Paste does. And I don't know if you've had that problem before, but I have where um, the Yes Paste just, it's different. Yes Paste leaves a sticky residue on top also. This does not. So I'm going to show you something that this is what I love about Nori Paste. One of the big things. First of all, it's repositionable. I can, I can actually move it around. And if you could see, I'm moving it. And I'm going to position it on and move that paper around until I get it centered just the way I want it. And see, I can still move it and until I get exactly the position I want. And it dries totally flat. And if I wanted to put some paste over it, which there's no need right now, but I could, and it will not leave a residue. It won't leave a mess. It is amazing. You can paint over it, you collage over it. Um, like I did with this one, I used Mod Podge over it and it didn't affect it or cause any wrinkling. But now, whoops, I don't even know which one there is. That's the last one. This will be finished once I let it dry completely. Um, you know, give it an hour or two and I'll put some, some Mod Podge on it and then my box is finished. But I wanted to show you how easy it is to uh, paste things over. Like if I wanted to take this one and finish it off, Let's see if I can find a piece of paper big enough. Or if maybe I cut one down already, I don't know. Um, maybe I did. But I can put another piece of paper to cover that little spot up same way. There's another thing I'll show you just to show you the repositionability of this. I've got some little pieces of, uh, of this beautiful paper and I kind of cut them up because the paper isn't long, long enough to wrap around this jar, this glass thing. This is my little brush holder, actually. I'm gonna put some of this, right? The paper's Why right on. Why are you on. using nori paste again, Karen? Um, we got a question from Kitty. Once dry, if the nori paste gets wet, does it reconstitute? Yes, well, nori paste will, is uh, basically totally archival in the sense it's reversible. So if you, um, it will reconstitute when it's wet. But that, what's interesting, that's why I love using this, um, and then sealing it with a matte medium if I'm doing something I'm going to be handling a lot. Um, it works great for Soji screens for windows. If you want to remove it later, because you can, you can you can re-wet it and it will, it can be removed. So that's the beauty of it. So I'm going to put it on here and you can see I can move it around. I'm just going to show you how I can slide it on the glass. See how it's just sliding around? And then I can position it and I've got this open time. And... And it's just lovely by itself. It doesn't, like this one, I wouldn't need to put anything on because, you know, it's going to be a, a brush holder. I don't think I'm going to be handling it. I could put a coat of matte uh, medium over it, which seals everything permanently. But I have this repositionable time, and that's what, that's the thing about it. I can also put it directly on the glass if I want. Um, I could do that, but I'm just going to do it this way. I'm just going to put... And you know, could put it on the front. It doesn't. Nori paste is one of those pastes that you're not feeling like, like if you're handling wallpaper rolls and you're getting sticky everywhere and you're it's sticking to everything. It doesn't do that. It's just such a lovely paste. I'm getting it on my hands and it feels more like lotion than glue. It's pretty incredible, and it's not going to tear. I'm not going to tear my papers. And the most delicate papers, like rice paper, washi paper, fibrous, you know, papers it really won't tear it. And that's the loveliness of it. And I'm just gonna get this thing. I could leave a gap, that might be kind of cool. If I just leave a little glass, nope, I'm gonna join it right there. So you can see how I'm sliding it. And so I can actually just get it to position just the place I want it. And then I can smooth it down. And it is not gonna alter my paper. That's what I love about it. It's not changing the, the um, not changing the, the property of it at all. I'm going to put another piece of, I don't know how many pieces I can put. It looks like I can only put four. So I'm going to put another piece. Do you get the idea of what I can collage with this over um, with 
nori paste, I would use the nori paste for the rice papers or the very fibrous papers, tissue papers. It's fantastic on tissue paper because um, a lot of tissue papers are so delicate that they tear so easily when you're using glue. But if you're going to use, if you're going to be doing something with tissue paper and you don't want the artwork to tear, you can use the nori. And I'm just going to position it up a little bit. And I don't think I cut them down to the size I wanted, but anyway, but you get the idea. So I'm able to get this on and I have one more place and I'm going to use that blue because I love that blue. And I wanted to do a little, oh, good. I don't know how that wasn't planned. I don't know how I measured it perfectly, but that was a total happy accident. <laughs> but so you can see, I'm not worried about my brush getting, uh, or, you know, dried up or clogged. I'm going to have no problem washing that. Even if I let it dry for two hours, it's going to wash out just fine. So yes, use your nori paste more often. <laughs> now, that was, uh, Randall was saying that. Now, the reason I love nori paste, not only is it great by itself. Now, I've got to move these around. Now, see, there's a little gap there. So I'm going to start scooching these papers around on my glass because I still have some time to position them so that I get, I have no gap or a little, as little gap as I, there, as I have there. Yeah, nice. So I can see a little gap here. So I'm gonna squish this toward, see how I have that time to do that? It's amazing. And I'm gonna just kind of check, oh, there's the same one. <laughs> oh no, I, I just have to keep moving until there's a little acceptable gap. And if I don't want, I could also just put some more pa uh, paper down, like layers. I like it like that. I just think that's pretty, just like that. It's going to make a nice little brush holder where I put all my watercolor brushes. In fact, I've got all my little watercolors like this here. <laughs> I love it. But this is really fun, a fun way to use your noise paste. So I'm going to put this aside for now. And I don't want to, I want to, I know I can get a little off. I can get crazy and get involved in one thing. So I'm going to keep going. Another thing that the paint or the paper that I was using today is great for is collage. Um, I did a little, this little collage, it's still a little damp. This is on our five by seven hot press watercolor paper. And it's fantastic for collage because it is really nice and thick, has this nice watercolor, both sides are watercolor paper. Um, I'm gonna turn this into four ATCs because it's just kind of like a master sheet, right? So what I did though, before I cut it down, I wanted to kind of share you with you the process. What I did was, I won't do the whole thing, but I'll just share a little bit with you. I'm just gonna take that little piece of paper off. And this is, I just laid it down and I started to gather some papers and I'm just gonna grab a little collection here. And I divided my papers up into different things. I've got a little bits of the, washi of the origami paper, which I think is incredible, the, the patterns and the gold. I love having a little splash of gold. If anybody that knows me, I love throwing a little gold in my uh, stuff. I just think it adds something. So I've got some of these in kind of contrasting colors. I also have some tissue paper that, um, that I st uh, stenciled with some stamp pad ink. Now, I'm gonna give you a little, little preview. I know that we're working on it, it's coming. But if you have the rule of 6MMU or 6MMK, any of the rolls of our rice paper, it has this little tissue paper outer, um, outer wrap. This is what I used for this. It is fantastic. It, it actually is amazing. It totally disappears onto your artwork, so onto your collage. The edges don't even show. So this is what these are. They're just little bits that I've done on that outer wrap. And then I've got some... Some, uh, just some deli paper that I did some painting on. And I kind of went for a color palette that was kind of, that worked together. Red, these nice warm colors. I've got a little, um, what's this thing called? It's a security envelope, the inside. I've got a little bit of that, just for some, for some contrast. Got a little bit of um, some rice paper that I had done a dip and dye technique, kind of a rizigami technique. And then these are just some printed papers and more of that. But I just look for kind of a nice contrasty mess of things. And what I do is if you notice this paper is so fibrous and so strong, it has a definite grain. So if you want to tear it, you can get like a nice fibrous edge 
if you could see that. But it's a nice little, really nice soft edge, but you can tear it in different directions and get nice torn edges, which some papers are not that friendly that way because they have a direction that either you can, you know, it's really jaggedy on one end, on one edge, but this one gives me a really nice torn edge on all four sides that I really love. And what I will do with this, I probably won't do the whole process, but I'm just gonna give you uh, kind of the, just the basic idea here. I could have painted this paper first with a color, which would really shorten the process a little bit, but um, I didn't, so, but you can paint it ahead of time, that'd be great. I'm just gonna put three pieces of, of this paper down. Now I'm going to use um, some nori paste. And I just take it with my fingers. And I love it because I can just slather it on and I'm not gonna hurt my fingers or cause a lot of problems. Try this with gel medium and you know what happens. You have permanent, <laughs> you're, you're gonna have permanent uh, gel medium. It's gonna take forever to get it off your uh, hands. Now I use, a, um, I like to use a little tool like this little wedge because it kind of smooths out the glue and it flat makes it nice and flat. And then I probably recommend a brush with this, but oh well. <laughs> so I'm gonna use the Nori paste with the washi paper. You could use it with any papers, but the uh, more fibrous the paper it is and the more delicate it is, the better your Nori paste will work. So I'm just gonna kind of, er, kind of position this and maybe go outside the edge a little of, oops, I meant to do it on this side. Here we go, see? You can do this with uh, this, but you can't change your mind usually with other glues. And that's why I love it so much. Can't talk about Nori paste enough, but you can combine it with your other stuff, your gel mediums and other things. And that's why I'm sharing this with you today. So I'm just gonna put this on in another spot. I don't wanna think too much. I tend to do that, <laughs> too, too much thinking. There's not, nothing's gonna be showing. There's gonna be so much of this is gonna be covered. And it's going to go to the edge on that. So I have the total edge, but I have three pieces here that I just put down and I'm just going to do this. See, it just doesn't stick until it's dry. But like what I said, once it's dry, it's on there until you, unless you want to soak it off with water, you can, but it would take a lot of work to do it, but you can do it. So that's basically how I built that collage. And then I just kept layering and layering over until I got this. Then the very final part is a um, thin coat of gel medium, matte gel medium, or just matte medium, it's not a gel. This is very thin. Um, once the nori paste was dry, I totally coated it. Now it's not going anywhere. It's the paper is on there. I can do different things. I can paint on it. Now, because I put the gel medium or the matte medium over it, I'm not gonna be able to watercolor over it. If I kept the nori paste just only, I could do watercolors and other things over it. But so I'm gonna cut these down into little cute little index cards. And uh, as I remember, this is a, so it's five by index cards are, oh boy, what is it? I forgot now. <laughs> Three and a half by two and a half, right? Pretty sure. Um, so I'm gonna just cut that down and I'm gonna show you how cool it's gonna look. Two and a half, there's, there's a three and a half by two and a half. There's another one. By the way, Karen, Elkie was wondering about microglaze too. I think instead of a matte medium, would that work? The microglaze would seal it, but no, it would it would seal it, but it wouldn't really do what the matte medium would do. Because it's, uh, the microglaze is great for sealing like inkjet prints and papers that you never want to do any more work on. The matte medium has just given me another surface to maybe do some more work on. I could do some mark making on these. Aren't these cool? I just love these. And then I can kind of decide like this one, I think that's really pretty by itself. I mean, put a focal point there. I could put some words here. And really the, the, uh, the, the microglades is a different, you know, I would use it maybe to put on this when it dries. So if I do put my little greasy hands all over it, it's not gonna, um, you know, ruin the surface or get a little spot on it. So I could do that with the microglades. But with these, um, once I'm, Finished, totally finished. Then I could put microglaze on it. But um, until then, I'm still going to keep it open. Um, the matte medium will allow me to just keep working. <clears throat> so those are the that's just the collage. I, the collage things you can do with this paper. And 
<clears throat> excuse me, what I love is all these little tiny motifs are now starting to really shine. Like I see these little sweet flowers and, you know, they were busy before, but now they're just little bits of elements inside my collage. Some of them are hand painted, but I've got these little beautiful graphic little things going on here. You could see it under there. And there's that gorgeous little hint of gold here and there. So yeah, just wanted to see that you can use this paper in collage. Now the next thing, because I don't, I've got 20, a little over 20 minutes. Um, I did promise a couple of origami type things. So I'm going to show you, because we got to do origami when we use this paper, right? So I'm going to kind of clear off my space just a little, and I'm going to do a little dress with this gorgeous paper. Now, this is a tough choice. What color do I choose? Um, so I can use a blue one. I love the blue, but I could go any color. And they're all so gorgeous. You want to just save them all. <laughs> it's just hard to choose. But I think I'll use this really pretty kind of a pale. It's got a like gold, like a rose gold with some fans in it. It's really pretty. What I've got to do is I've got an oil paste on my hands a little bit. It's not like it's a matte medium. It's going to come out really easy with, with just a little tiny wipe of a baby wipe. Or you can just rinse it off, but it comes off really easy. Just, I love that. Why I love it so much. And if I have any on my table, it'll just come right off. And I love that. So I'm going to do this dress. Two things about this dress. I'm going to open this box. I think it's in here, wherever it is. My pile here. This little cute little dress I made into a bookmark. You can see I've got a little thing on the back with the folded dress in the front. I think they're just so cute. I like that one so much. I might do another one. Or I could do like one with a light blue with pink. That would be cute too. I think I will. Let's change the color. I'm changing my mind on the color. <laughs> so here's what we want to do. If you want to do the dress, and you can do it with your own papers, whatever you've got. So I'm going to take the paper and I'm going to put it pattern side down. And I'm going to close, I'm going to, I'm going to close it. I'm going to fold it in half in one direction. And I'm opening it up and folding it in half in the other direction. Like that. And I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to fold the edge to the center crease just to meet that center crease. I'm going to fold the other edge to meet the center crease like that. Okay. So what you have, if you look at it, you have this cupboard fold. Okay. And then you're going to take, you're going to turn it upside down. We're going to turn the whole thing upside down. You've got these mountain folds here, three mountain. There's one, two, three mountain folds. I'm going to take the mountain, this closest, the one on the outside, I'm going to pinch it together, I think with my fingers, and I'm going to roll it over to have that edge meet, meet that center crease right there, just to lay right next to it. Okay. And then classic dress design. Yes. <laughs> so true. Um, I did a little change to it. I don't know if anybody did before, but I narrowed it a little because the original dress, which you will see shortly, really uh, was too much of a flare to me. So I just folded the, pa the uh, papers back a little. So here's the other mountain I'm going to just bring to that center. Just kind of pinch it yeah, and sorry, roll it over question. to that. For the paper that you're using now, is that still from the same 4336 pack? That's from 4312, I think. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Somebody was asking. Yeah, that's from there because uh, we have three or two or three different use in assortments. So this is out of the 4330, uh, 4312, I believe. But it, um, the thing about the use in papers, they're not always going to, you can't guarantee each paper is going to be exactly the same because they, they really mix them up a little bit. So that's kind of like a surprise. It's like a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get but you're going to get a color theme like um, the blue, use in blues or use in red or use in kind of pastel. So you're gonna, this one probably came from the pastel or the light colored one. So 
I'm just, you know, you'll get a nice variety if you get all three packs because they're really gorgeous. And this is the six inch or five and seven eighths inch paper. You can do get also the four, the four and five eighths inch as well and do the same thing. So I've got my little, and I know I'm taking a long time to do this, but there it is. Hopefully you've caught up if you were able to do it. This is how it should look, how your piece should look. Now you'll have a fold here, right in the center. And I'm just gonna take that fold and do the same thing I did. I'm gonna pinch it right in the middle, just pinch it up about a little more than half an inch. And I'm gonna roll it up, just kind of roll it, you know, fold it forward and then crease what's underneath. And I'm gonna grab my little creasing tool uh, my little Yasutomo bamboo creasing tool. This is like my favorite tool. It gets a nice sharp edge. It's got places to, you know, for narrow, for fairly handy. <laughs> Plus, you can probably cut some cheese with it if you want to, you know, have a, use it for your cheese platter. Um, so I've got my little, this is sort of the dress here that I'm starting. This is the skirt. This is going to be the top of the blouse. So I'm going to take this part here and I'm going to put my finger under it just a little bit and I'm going to just take pull this end out and I'm going to pull it out as far as it will go until I can kind of till that part is as far as it's going to go and then I'm going to go ahead and crease it up here. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to move it up like fold just push pull that up till it just wants to almost lay flat. You don't want to tear it. You don't want to give too much pressure there but pull it up and then give it a crease and you'll see it will kind of crease at an angle like that. So it's gonna look like that. Now you're gonna turn it over and this is, you'll see this is where we're gonna have, we're gonna bring this shirt thing together and we're gonna make the skirt. Skirt's already made pretty much. So to make this shirt, we're gonna take this whole piece and fold it, just kind of fold it over like you're gonna fold it, but then this part wants to lift up. And what you're gonna do is push this as far as you can, you can push it, and then bring this one in and bring, and just kind of pivot this out at an angle and, to, and then flatten it once you've got that angle to, to right to the edge here. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Fold it, just fold the whole thing over. You'll see that wants to lift up, that's good. You want that, and then you're just gonna Take that and angle it out just a little bit and then flatten it. Okay, like that. So what you're gonna do next is if you look at it, this is the classic dress, which is, uh, it's been around for a long time. I don't even know who designed it. And it's just so sweet. But this one is gonna change. We're changing it a little bit to look more modest or more normal, <laughs> I guess, the normal dress. Um, I guess this could be like a circle skirt or something, but you can make it like this or you can do the other part. So now we're going to make sleeves and I've got these little top little layers here. I'm going to fold those at an angle, just right. I want that to end about a little past the halfway mark and I'm going to make it match the other side. I'm kind of making these match like that. And then you're going to turn it over and check your sleeves. Sometimes one will be too big, like I can see maybe the right is a little bit bigger than the left, and I could make an adjustment right now, just to just a slight adjustment to make those symmetrical. I just kind of pulled it out a little bit and did that. So now I've got this really cute dress, but it needs a little decoration at the top. So I'm going to fold this top layer down, and I'm going to do this on both sides for a collar. The collar on this pa paper is going to really stick out because it's a different sturdier paper than a normal origami paper. And I'm gonna grab a pair of scissors because I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna grab a pair of scissors and I'm just gonna trim it right to the where the base of that neckline is, right at that place. And then I'm folding these backwards just to get them out of the way like that. My dress is almost done. It could be done, but it's not done yet. <laughs> this is what I love to do. I'm gonna take can see there's a lot of little things that are happening here. It wants to, you know, stick out. There's a lot of layers. So I like to take a little white glue. In this case, I'm not using Nori paste because it's going to take too long to set. So I'm going to use a little white dab of white glue here. And this is called reptile glue. If you haven't heard of it, it's a pretty good glue. Just going to lay this down. You could use any PVA, Elmer's, anything. I'm just going to put some glue in these little spots here. I'm going to Put it here, maybe underneath the skirt like this. 
just so that I can keep that stuff from going where it wants to go. Matching shoes. Yes, Kitty. I'd love that. I do have some high heel uh, uh, models that I'd have to use it. I'd do a really small favor, but yes, matching shoes would <laughs> look so cute. So now the next step is we've got the finished dress. It's very, very festive. And I'm going to just kind of tone it down a little bit. And the way I do that is I'm going to take this long edge and I'm going to fold it down to the folded edge right here, just like to meet, to meet this folded edge. And I do this on this side. What this, when I saw, when I did this, oh, <laughs> you watched a video on how to do origami shoes. Yes, there's so much fun. So these little edges make it stronger, make the dress a lot stronger too. And I'm gonna put a little glue on this just here and lay it right there. Now, I hate to see things plain and raw like that. So this is what why I came up with an idea to make it a bookmark. And what I'm gonna do is I've got this little piece of watercolor paper and I've cut it to the size. It's a little, it's just a hair smaller than the width of the band here, which is about one and a half inches wide. And everybody's is gonna be different depending on what size paper you use, but I don't want it to stick out past the um, dress. I want it to be hidden. This will make it a sturdy piece as well. One thing I like to do is I can do it before or after, I guess. I'll do it after. I'm going to go ahead and glue this on. Actually, no, I'm not going to glue it on yet. <laughs> the point would be to glue this on, but I wanted to show you something that I just love doing. This is just something I'm kind of inspired by this little piece of paper. It has really cute little um, flowers and really cute. So I'm going to take my watercolors that I have, because I have to do watercolor as well. <laughs> Can't help it. And I'm going to take my little brush and I'm going to make some little, maybe a copy of one of these flowers. So I'm going to just, I could see the colors here. I've got a purple in this very pale purple. So I'm just going to do it. I'm going to take a little purple lake or a little mauve. Add a little blue to it. And I'm going to make a little, maybe just a little cute thing here that just kind of looks sort of like what I'm kind of like that. I don't know. It looks like the thing on the, but I'm inspired by that. I'm just taking uh, inspiration from the actual origami piece here. I'm going to do a little turquoise. Really, so you can use your little piece of paper as your inspiration for kind of making it match your dress. So there, that kind of matches it. There's some pink in there too. Maybe a little pink, just a kind of very pale pink here. Don't want to overdo it. And I'm using a number one brush. It might be a little too small, but I'm going to just take a little of that pink color. I'm going to try to replicate or match that pink I have in the watercolor. And then there, I've got something that kind of goes with that dress, just a little something. And I may even just put a couple little spots up here, maybe some little dots, like they have metallic dots, but I'm just gonna do little pink dots here like that. And maybe some little green or not green, turquoisey green, or they look like a phthalo green maybe. I'm just trying to match the color that I have here. And I'm just gonna make some little leaves, maybe, some of that same color I'll put on above the heart, like that. And now I'm gonna take, let that dry. And while it's drying, I'm gonna grab my trusty little pen and I could put a quote. I have, boy, I gotta think of a quote, but I don't have one. So I'm gonna have to come up with one. I might find one here. I'll just do this one, I'll use this one. <laughs> of course, I, I picked this one because I thought it was a gorgeous quote. Um, you can pick other, if I can find one. That's the thing. When I'm doing quotes, I have to kind of plan it. But I'll let's just leave this as is. I'll glue it on later. But I, I would probably put my quote in here in my or if it's a birthday, you could put happy birthday or I miss you or anything you want. You could uh, detail these little bits when they dry with little dots if you want. I think I'll just leave that alone. It's not dry. All right. So the last part, when this is all dry and ready to go, I'll just take some glue and attach it to the back of my dress. 
And this one, I just use a very light coat of this reptile glue. Um, not using nori paste because it would just take too long to dry and I'm impatient. And I don't, it's a thick cardstock. So the nori paste is probably not as effective for that. Um, so that's a fun way. So yeah, you just have to wait longer for it to dry, Leslie. Yes, the nori paste will work, but also it will be more, um, it'll make your paper warp a little more because of the moisture content and because you're using some more, you know, more paste. So to put it, dry it between something flat for until it's completely dry, till all the moisture's out. That's what I would do. So this one can, I can actually get a pretty quick tack, just as long as I, of course I can't reposition it now, which I could with the Nori. Maybe I can if I really hurry. Oops, trying to get that straight on there. And I'm just gonna put this, kind of press that down onto the thing, onto the dress. And then what I like to do is um, I'll put that flat between a couple of books, but look how pretty that is. You can even put a little, flower here, a little, you know, something kind of fun that would be really cute to embellish it. But for a bookmark, it's perfect because it, it lays really nice and flat. And then you can add a little... Someone mentioned to add a belt or buttons too. Oh, a little button would be cute or just like lace. I used to put uh, that stuff, tool, T-U-L-E. I think it's T-U-L-L-E. I used to put that over the dress. And there's so many ways you can really overdo these. <laughs> and you can put these on a greeting card. Yes, you can put them on any of your greeting cards. Or you could make it a removable bookmark or inside of your greeting cards. So many things. So many things. Um, so I just want to make sure I covered everything. I made the dress. Oh, I know. I didn't want to disappoint because I know some people from the last stream really like my little pockets that I made, those little um, folded pockets. So I'm going to show you how I did that. And I'm going to refresh your memory a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if I did it out of this, but the last live stream I did, or I had one of these, I showed it to you, but I didn't show you how to do it. So I'm going to show you how to make one. And this one I'm going to use, it's a piece, it's a rectangle sheet of paper. So I'm going to put that aside. It's a rectangle that I have, this is actually deli paper that I have fused together, two sheets of deli paper. So it's thicker. It feels like nice, thick, you know, it feels almost like bond weight, but it's got a crispness to it. Um, the way I fused it, I used some methyl cellulose, which is like wallpaper paste. And I laid the sheet of painted paper first on a, a glass plate and painted with the methyl cellulose. I think you could use nori paste just as well. You could use probably um, PDA, some white glue, but thin it, thin it down. And I laid the deli paper on top, another sheet. And this is how I got this nice, thick, wrinkly, crunchy, yummy paper. <laughs> so I'm gonna fold it now out of, I'm gonna make an envelope out of it. So to make your envelope, you need a piece of paper that is rectangle. But um, I got, I'm not sure the, the proportions here, but this is six and a half by nine. You can do a six by nine, six by nine and a half, but, just a nice rectangle to make this happen, to make one of these. And if you have a specific size that you want it to be, you have to just size it depending on that. But this one, I'm not doing any specific size. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my pattern side down, the, the side that I want to show the most. Um, it is it is something double-sided paper looks really good in because you'll see both sides. But I'm gonna just fold it in an angle. Now, what, what's important is that you've got these two peaks, they need to match. And then this side right here needs to be the same distance on this end and this end. Very simple. So you have got same distance. I don't know if I measure it with a ruler. <laughs> it should be the same. It's about one and a half, one and a half. It doesn't have to be exact, but you know, close. And this is what you'll have, sort of this angled piece here. So we've got this first fold goes up these little peaks need to line up. And this basically kind of symmetrical here. Now, I'm gonna think of my, if I think of the width, if I want the width of this to be, let's say, whatever size, um, oh, I'm gonna measure. So let's say you wanna put something in it, like a card. If I wanna do a four inch wide card, I wanna do that. I'm gonna center it kind of in there and I'm gonna just fold it over. 
maybe it's more like three and a half, but we'll see. I'm going to take this part. I'm going to fold it over at the, the one, the one inch mark. And then I've got this part. I'm just trying to center it so I have those peaks in the middle. It's not necessary. Now I'm going to just go ahead and crease it. And I'm going to take the where the four or a three and a half, whatever. I'm going to do four because I want it four inches wide. There we are. I'm going to make sure that's four a little bigger than four, actually. And I'm just going to crease it right now. And that's determining the uh, width because the depth is going to be the same, but the width is going to, you can change it. So what you have now is if you take your pop, this is it. This is all the folding you're going to do. So what you're going to do now, if you take this piece and you tuck it in, you've got essentially one, two, three, four pockets. Um, I'm going to put some, but of course you, you can put your hand through that. So, you know, one of your pieces of paper is going to slide through. So I like to seal the bottom. You can either seal the bottom with a little white glue just to, you know, just so you can keep all of the pockets. Or if you want to take some washi tape, you'll lose a little bit of what the first pocket, but it's not that bad. I'm going to take some washi tape. I'm just going to lay it right. I'm kind of lay it over this about halfway through. It doesn't have to be perfect. I love this tape. I found this. So I don't know where. It's so pretty. When it runs out, I'll be so bummed. Um, we can make our own washi tapes too if we want. Okay, there. I'm just trimming it to the, be the exact width of the pocket. And then I'm just going to fold it over. And that keeps my pocket closed. And it looks really really pretty like that. Um, you can put your papers, you can put scraps, little tchotchkes here and there. You can, if you're doing a collage and you want to save the bits and pieces, you can put them all in there, group them together. That's really great for this. This would be great in an art journal. You know, just putting scraps, uh, little tidbits, let's say you want to travel with your art journal and you want to put, just take some scraps with you and do some journaling later or some collaging you got it, all the bits and pieces you can just store and tuck away. You can divide it by categories if you want. Here we got a little, or, or the size. You can even put some in here. So I can still use my four pockets and divide these all up. But I love this little thing. Um, you can put little folded pieces, like a folded heart would look really nice here, or a focal point would look really great um, right in this spot. I think I've got samples of those somewhere. I don't know if I can, <laughs> but that is the pocket. Um, you can glue it or tape it onto a journal page or the front of a journal. Uh, let's say you have a mixed media, media journal you're working on. Just grab some collage papers and put them in there. Like this one, I'll just fold this one since it doesn't matter if it's folded. I can just shove all these papers in here. And then I have, I'm ready for my next collage session. And I'll have all the papers I need you know, have my nori paste and all my stuff with me. And I'm ready to go. I'm ready to collage. There we go. Isn't that fun? I love that. So I'm hoping this inspired you. I'll grab some tissue paper too. I'm hoping that this inspired you today to just grab your, kind of mix up your using washi uh, rice papers. We call them rice papers, but we know that they're called, they're washi in Japanese. Japan, in Japanese, washi means paper. And we are, these are definitely washi papers that are so gorgeous and they're printed so beautifully, classic designs. This one this reminds me of the Chris, of Christmas for some reason, I love it. Um, let me just show you how this one's dried. So it looks, feels great, it's already pretty dry. And if I wanted to put some, a little bit of, um, of that, the micro glaze over it, or I can put the matte medium over it. The matte medium will not alter it either, um, but the micro glaze would give it even more. It just looked really interesting. And same thing, thank you, Lori. Um, thank you for coming. Um, I really thank everybody for coming. And um, and thank you so much for hanging out with me. So I'm sure Phoebe will have a, something to say and we I will sign off. I mean, I'll just stay here and hang out and keep up, keep pasting and doing stuff, but. Baby, do you have anything You're you good. want to say?
Uh, no, just the usual closeout. Thank you everyone for joining us. And thank you, Karen, for another like super action packed demo. I feel like we saw so many different kinds of projects and I know a lot of people were super inspired. Oh, we got one more question. Jane cold asked, wax over you the jar? Cold wax? Yeah. Yes, you jar. can put cold wax over the jar. I'm reading, I get to read, I'm so excited. Um, wait, 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 wait for this to completely dry, put a little cold wax. Now, I may, because cold wax has a little solvent in it, I. I'm going to try it real quick. Let me just give you a, let's find out. Um, I'm going to do this real quick to see if it alters the paper. I'm going to just take a yes. little bit of this and I'm going to put a little wax over it. It looks like because of the solvent. No, I was thought it was going to really dull the gold a little bit, but I don't see that it's doing that. So let me give you a closer look. So that's cold wax medium. It does tend to take a little of the, gold kind of dulls it down a little bit. I'll let that dry and I could shine it. But let me show you when I do the microglaze, if you have that, it won't affect it at all. Or if I have a Renaissance wax should need it, but let's take the microglaze and put a little tiny bit over that and let those dry a little. And let's buff it out. So yes, I think it's a good question. Good question to ask. So let's see this one. This is the microglaze. It does not affect the finish really at all. It makes it a little more shiny actually. And then this is the cold wax. I'm trying to give it a little time to, let's see, I'm just gonna, might as well test you test it here for you before you lose a sheet yeah, of paper. But this I is why this, we love hanging out with everybody live too. <laughs> yeah, well, look at this. Okay, so yeah, cold wax doesn't seem to affect it either. See how the, it doesn't affect it at all. So yes, you can use cold wax medium. I'm using Gamblin. I didn't try the other one, the other brand I have, the Jacquard, but uh, this cold wax medium does have a petroleum distillate in it. So I was concerned that it might move the uh, gold, but it didn't. So yeah, good stuff. This is a really good stuff to have. Like I mentioned before in my last, I think it was last time, I used cold wax medium to seal this uh, swatch card and it keeps it, you know, it, does, it stays nice and it's water resistant and seals it, seals my watercolors. I love it for that. So if you're a watercolor mixed media artist or experimenter, you don't have to, you know, you can just have this. It's meant to be put over oil paintings, but I found it's very useful over a lot of different things. So that's it for me, I think, unless, any, if, unless you have any more questions. Um, I think we're good. Someone did ask, uh, but not for today, but June was interested in seeing how to make your own washi tape after you mentioned that. Um, so that could be cool to a lot of people, I think. But um, I think for this, we are all set. Yeah, yeah, I think we could do something. Making your own washi tape, there's so many different things you could do, but um, I've got some ideas that would be simple, um, very simple that maybe, that I would be happy to share. Um, we could even use some nori paste. That might be fun. <laughs> tissue, Ooh, maybe some tissue. Yeah. We'll do some tissue and nori paste with it. That'd be fun. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us and have a great weekend. And we will see you back in two weeks for our next one. Happy thank you, weekend, Karen. everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.